There are some things in life that even though they are indisputably true, we still refuse to accept them. Think seeing all those happy campers pitching a tent in a sea of mud for a festival in a rainstorm. Yeah, we get it, the rain won't stop your fun. Tell me again without shivering in your wellies. Or, God forbid, the rising price of Freddo's. I have 20p on me and that is all you're getting. Make it stop! The same can be said for video games, of course. These worlds we spend countless hours in can blindside us with endings that we simply are not ready for. Whether it's gut-wrenching reality crashing into our lovely wholesome game adventures, or just stubborn denial that all the foreshadowing of a massive, sad revelation has actually come through. These are the endings that had us crying out, NOT LIKE THIS! The final moments we do not recognise as canon lest our heads implode in trying to process them. No, that's not what happens, because we said so. The best truth is the one you make up yourself after all. Now, you'll have to excuse me, as I have a planet to get back to ruling. Oh, and just before we begin, here's a heads up that this list will have big spoilers throughout. So check the description below to avoid any nasty surprises. Well, first things first, there's one ending that we all know has to make an appearance here, so let's start with the bittersweet perfection of Ellie's perturbed little face at the close of The Last of Us. How dare you, naughty dog? How dare you? You know the story by now. Unless you don't, then cover your ears, as I'm going to skip right to the end. Joel is faced with the reality that his surrogate daughter will have to die for a potential cure to the cordyceps brain infection to be found. And he says, hell no. He kills everyone involved in trying to save the world, steals Ellie back, and drives off into the distance, spinning the most stressful white lie possible to save Ellie from a lifetime of survivor's guilt when she wakes up from the anesthesia. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. The last thing we see in The Last of Us is Ellie's face processing Joel's false promise that he's telling the truth before we cut to credits. No certainty, no nice dose of deserved serotonin for finishing this emotional journey, no nothing. Just jaw-dropping commitment to a world totally screwed by Joel's actions and a young girl's attempt to accept why she's still alive. This is my reward for turning all those clickers into mushroom pate? We've had a sequel now, of course, but those years of theorising on what exactly Ellie's face says at the end of the game, some wild rejection of ambiguity and a fruitless attempt at closure, were the most intense ever. Don't get me wrong, it is a brilliant, perfect ending that shouldn't be touched. But oh my god, I'm still not over it existing at all. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess and then Sam. Next up is a game I wanted to finish for years. I had the demo on PS1, which I played over and over and over and over again, which of course meant that I could never finish the story. Until I completed it on my Vita a few years ago, which left me a sad mess of a human being. I'm talking about Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, a wonderful game where two friends, Klonoa and Hugh Pal, go on an adventure to defeat the evil Gadius, who has one of the most terrifying voices ever, but spooky out, I worry now who watch. <laughs> but can't stop you from saving the world as well as a kidnapped singer. Well done team, we've had a great time exploring these amazing worlds, inflating adorable enemies, and listening to brilliant music. Time to relax. <laughs> Don't do this to me. No, 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 no. No, it's a lie. Please tell me it's all a lie. It's not a lie, it's all true. Everything Klonoa knew the world, his family, his friends, every memory was fake. Things he loved suddenly ripped away from him against his will, as he is then forced to return to his own world. <laughs> but it's okay, because I still act as if I don't know any of this. 
Every time I play this game, even though I know what's really happening, I just think, nah, it's fine. Let's go have fun! Whee! This is definitely the windmill near Klonoa's house. This is definitely the bridge near Klonoa's house. Heck, this is definitely Klonoa's house! These aren't Vision's game, they're levels! And I refuse to accept that Klonoa doesn't live here. There are two things I still cannot accept about our next entry, Final Fantasy X, and both relate to the main character. Firstly, I can't accept how his name is officially pronounced. Tidus. Tidus! I spent ages saying Tidus instead because it seemed logical and sounded nice, until I heard Kingdom Hearts Waka saying, Me and Tidus, we are going to do a little exploring today. And my heart was broken. Just everything I thought was true about Tidus has come crashing down. Anyway, I suppose I should get on and finish the game. Yeah, so on to the second thing I can't accept. The ending. Final Fantasy X took the whole it was all a dream shtick and decided, no, it wasn't all a dream, you were. Not only is he not called Tidus, he doesn't even really exist, prompting an ending sequence that has to go down as one of the saddest in gaming history. Yuna plummeting from the emotional peak of realising she doesn't actually have to die to save the world into the gut-wrenching trough of tragedy that is her love interest dissolving into an unhuggable nothing right before her eyes. Tedus. Tedus. In fairness, I wasn't the only one who couldn't accept the character I'd dodged 200 lightning bolts with was nothing more than a sad boy's dream, with a mysterious post credit sequence showing Tidus, Tidus, swimming upwards from the ocean depths, and then an actual full-blown sequel confirming that actually everything's fine, Tidus is in fact real and alive, don't worry about it. I'm home. Here's hoping for a Final Fantasy X 3, where they retcon the pronunciation of his name. Our next entry is an object lesson in when gaming mechanics collide with narrative needs and make me sad. I am talking specifically here about Red Dead Redemption, the first one on PS3. I love this game to pieces. It's a bitter end of era western that speaks in the language of post classical cowboy cinema and is packed with the looming significance of Cormac McCarthy. It plays you a lovely song when you cross the border into Mexico, and I think it's the best game Rockstar has ever made. So what the heck is your problem, me? And don't quote Cormac McCarthy, it doesn't impress anybody. My problem, if you've been paying attention to this video at all, is the ending. Having completed an epic journey to hunt down the members of his old gang and save his family, John Marston is finally reunited with his wife and son and retires to a farm. And then, and then the game doesn't end. And it goes on not ending, for ages. You're just living on a farm, herding and hunting, and realising that this is bad news. Eventually the army turns up, signalling that Marston has been betrayed, and you help your family to escape through the smoke and noise of an enormous gunfight. Then there's a dramatic pause before Marston turns his attention back to the fight, stepping outside the barn to find... No worries, I'll just use my time-slowing superpowers to shoot all of these idiots in the face. Except what actually happens is we cut to a cinematic and Marston is shot to coughing ribbons while we look on helplessly. I get it, Marston's story demands that he not survive. He's done too many bad things, his past won't stay quiet. But if the game wanted me to accept this, it should have put 300 men outside the barn, or made me fight a bear with a spoon, basically anything except the exact sort of fight I've been winning the entire game. I just wish this thing hadn't happened, and between the wish and the thing, the world lies waiting. What would a branching narrative game be without an impossible moral quandary to stress you out and make you sad? I don't know, to be honest, since I haven't found one yet. Life is Strange is no different, with a whole bunch of choices designed to really get tugging on your heartstrings and probably snap a few in the process. 
None of them, however, are as intense as the final decision in the game, where you must pick between saving a town full of Max's friends and family, or her best friend that you've rescued from death countless times throughout the story. All that would take is for me to... to... It's Bay or Bay, baby! And there's no way around it. What makes it such a hard pill to swallow is that whatever you've achieved so far in the game as poor old Max feels like it's washed away no matter what choice you make. Save Chloe and the entirety of Arcadia Bay, including a load of innocent bystanders, is torn to shreds in a brutal storm. But choose to save the town and all of your work is rendered useless when Chloe is forced to die in the very scenario that first triggered Max's time-bending abilities. If you're like me, you played through one ending, felt very guilty and bad, then went full time traveller yourself to see the other option and felt even worse. Best to simply refuse that either exists, and pretend there's a secret third ending where everyone survives and throws a big party you can skip around with Chloe in tow as the credits roll. Oh, yes, my nice delusion. Much better. No. No, I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe that Heihachi Mishima is dead. After the long journey we've been through, over 25 years of spiky head patriarchy, I refuse to accept that a single punch to the chest is how Heihachi would go. The same man who survived taking electric bolts by devils, becoming a comet in space, turning into a firework, and being dropped into the abyss by a bear. <laughs> Okay, these aren't necessarily canon in the Heihachi and Kazuya story, but you get the point. I'm still clinging on to a thread of hope. We never see his body plop into the lava, so a part of me is expecting Heihachi to climb back up that volcano, stamp the ground, and give us the same enjoyment he's given us over the years. Oh Heihachi, you really need to stop throwing your relatives off high places, you little rapscallion. And yet another part of me has accepted that he's gone. This is the only time in everything Heihachi has gone through that we've heard his heart actually stop. The game wouldn't emphasise this for nothing, would it? For years it's as if I've had two little Heihachis on my shoulders. One of them going, Haha, I can survive anything! And the other one going, No, no, I'm actually gone now. No oxygen is going through my body. Ow, 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 goodbye forever. And that's the one I refuse to listen to, because as far as I'm concerned, he's alive! Bloodborne, a game I never, ever thought I'd finish. And yet here we are. I did it! I did the thing! I bravely fought through the entire game, or at least bravely watched Rosie doing most of it for me. And after each boss felt that storied eruption of endorphins so quintessential to the Soulsborne experience. Yes! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! This was a game that tests your skill, patience and perseverance, rewarding your time and effort with that incomparable sense of accomplishment that only comes after overcoming the sternest of challenges. Oh, 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 I can't wait to see what reward I'll get for finishing the game! said me from a few months ago, fueling myself for the final showdown against German with the electric anticipation of what I'd get after it was done. Because there was no way I was just going to do the cop-out thing and let him lop off my head. I'd heard all about that ending and was like, there's no way I've come this far, been carried by my better-at-the-game friends this entire time, only to throw in the towel at the last. In fact, I was going to go one better than German. I'd consumed all the umbilical cords prior to the fight. I was going all the way. I was taking on the moon presence as well. I'm, I won't heal. Heal! I'm not Go using blood vials. Why am I not using blood vials? It's an effect. Um, is the moon presence uses knowing mist. Sorry, well, it's Rob, dead I now. You were Ash and I was like, Go on, Rob. And I was like, Wait, it's Ash and I. I thought we were just. I thought we were getting him down to a little bit. And I did it. I did it. I finished Bloodborne. I properly finished Bloodborne. And then... Are you cold? Hey. Oh, 
good hunter. That's me, is it? I'm a slug now. That's just great. I muster up the courage to face a game I've been scared of for over half a decade. My friends drag me kicking and screaming through hours of terrifying monsters and bosses and unforgettable gothic horror. I finally get to the point where I feel like I've done something worthwhile. Ash beats the moon presence for me and my reward is that I'm a slug now. No, Bloodborne, no, you can't do this to me. And don't be telling me all the lore in the comments about great ones and all that stuff. I'm a slug. A cold slug. That's what I get for my pain. So thanks, Bloodborne. Thanks for nothing. I guess that's what happens when you get me involved. Sorry, Rob. Anyway, those were the endings we refused to accept. But what about yours? What video game had you crying about slug betrayal? Let us know your picks in the comments below. This has been PlayStation Access. Don't forget to subscribe for more PlayStation goodness, and we'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. PlayStation.